guys, welcome back into another exciting Geek Variance Deep Dive episode. This time we'll be pertaining to the Inquisitors, why you should care, a little backstory on them, and why any of this really matters moving forward into Obi-Wan, you know, the series that we're all super, super excited for. I'm going to give you a little bit of synopsis on everything, why this is important, why you should care, and everything we got going on. But before we get going, be sure to hit the like button, be sure that lovely red subscribe button greatly helps us out. It's free, it really helps the page out. We appreciate anything you guys can do pertaining to that to get us to have more people like you to talk to and educate. I'll be judging Master Brent for today's showing. Let's get into this show of practices. We'll discuss Star Wars, the Inquisitors. But as with all things, let's cite our sources first here. Come on, let's not get too carried away. Uh, Star Wars Rebels. Star Wars Scarif and the other Outer Rim Planets, and Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order will be the three primary sources that I will be digging through to find this material that you guys can also go out and find and use and apply for this series. These are my three main sources, you know, Star Wars Rebels, Star Wars Scarif and other Outer Rim Planets, and Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. That's where I'm digging up most of this information which will help you guys find everything that I am saying. Without further ado, let's jump on into the Inquisitors. But before we jump too far into the Inquisitors, let's jump into our main focus. Why do you care? Why is that important? There's two characters in particular with a bit of a third that I really believe that we need to focus in on for today's video. The Grand Inquisitor, first and foremost, he needs to be mentioned. I mean, he was in the trailer. He looked okay. I'm a little apprehensive about it. We'll see how it goes. I'm not really tied up that his look can ruin his character because a lot of characters can look pretty dang weird, but as long as the story is good, we don't really care. So, I mean, look, Adventure Time, Rick and Morty, both shows, weird artwork. I thought they were terribly drawn. The story is fantastic, though. You love it. If the Inquisitor looks bad on screen, he can't be fixed with a good story. Absolutely fine. I'll learn to deal. It'd be absolutely okay. No need to be apprehensive. And then the character Reva, who I believe is the third sister, which the Inquisitors go by first brother, second sister, so on and so forth, all the way up till about 10, usually per se. She will be one other main character in this series. You see her doing a lot of flips, a lot of stunts. She was the the maskless inquisitor that was just absolutely rocking and rolling through the main focus. She looked great, super excited for her character. And then we also had the fifth brother in the background. He also showed up in Star Wars Rebels just like the Grand Inquisitor did. So there's a lot of cool stuff pertaining to those characters. I really want to bring the light to you guys. We want to help educate a little bit on so you can maybe show, hey, guys, check out this video. This is what I learned. This is what I found. This is something that I can apply to my knowledge for the show moving forward to make it even better for each and every new geek or Star Wars geek apprentice on their way to become a Jedi Master in this lore. But let's give you a little bit of backstory here, kind of give you a little bit who are the Inquisitors, why they are such an important player, and what's going to be going on for this Kenobi series. The Inquisitors are a Force-sensitive group of people that Darth Vader and Darth Sidious have either recruited, corrupted, or just flat out, you know, found throughout the galaxy and brought them over to hunt down Jedi. That's their whole mission. Anyone who survived Order 66, the Inquisitors would go out and hunt and either kill, corrupt, or bring over to their order. I know corrupt and bring over to the order is like a gray area subject, but sometimes, you know, the means justify the ends here. You kind of have to split all the finest of hairs. But the the Inquisitors are just four sensitive people who go out and do Darth Sidious's and Darth Vader's goals, ambitions, and take out the Jedi. Sometimes they just literally go find them, report to Vader, who is in charge of this group should mention that right off the bat. So Hayden Christensen is super, super important in this because he's in charge of them who are getting prominent screen time shown in the trailer for Kenobi. So you need to know Vader, 
Vader, Inquisitors, and then Stormtroopers and so on and so forth. Literally, there's an order chain of events, but all of them will be hunting Luke and Kenobi. So it'll be super, super exciting to see how this all plays out with these four sensitive dark side users, not Sith, four sensitive dark side users, not Sith. They is only a rule of two. You have Darth Sidious, you have Vader. The Inquisitors are a whole gray area subject. They're not Sith, not Jedi, but they use the Sith arts and the Sith uh, saber styles, usually more of an offensive based, to get their mission completed. The Grand Inquisitor is someone that I really, really wanted to focus on. We'll mention his race. He is a Pa'un, which if you saw Star Wars Revenge of the Sith, he, he's from the planet of Utapau, which is where Kenobi ended up killing General Grievous. You know, blaster bolt to the stomach, his guts all lit on fire, and it was a whole bunch of crazy madness. Rode around on the dinosaur-looking monster with fur. It was super, super cool. Race of people. There were a Pa'un, and it was a cool outer rim planet. He was found there, brought over. To the Jedi, he was actually a Jedi Knight in training. He was a guard for the temple when Order 66 happened. But Sidious seduced him, pulled him over to the dark side of the Force, and had him become the Grand Inquisitor. Because Sidious didn't feel he was a threat overall to him or Vader or anything they had going on, but felt he was still strong enough to be useful. Nice little pawn for your scheme, but ultimately nothing that would ever topple anything that you had going on. He spent a lot of time after the purge studying the Jedi archives. He started learning the Jedi form of combat so that his offensive style he could find holes in, he could find ways to attack them and make sure that his missions were always successful. The Inquisitors were largely combative throughout the group while they all had the same objective, how they got the mission done and how they got things handled were entirely different. A lot of them fought over credit, a lot of them fought over getting all the glory. And sometimes they would form bonds, but in a lot of comic series, the bonds get severed very, very quickly. Vader doesn't want any bonds among the Inquisitors. There was a love story between the, the I believe it was the Twi'lek Inquisitor and another Inquisitor. They kind of had like a romantic feeling and Vader went to kill one of them. The other one went and defended the other one. So Vader, you know, did Vader things, handled business and, and took them out. He, a lot of times he trained them through torture. He would take off their limbs, uh, mess with them mentally, psychologically. He would just absolutely torture the ever-loving goodness out of all these people until they became corrupted, evil, vile people that, you know, could handle his business, make sure that there was no weakness in them, and that their mission objective was above anything else that they had going on. And the Grand Inquisitor is the leader of them. Vader is in charge of the Grand Inquisitor who's then in charge of everybody else. They all vie for his job and so on and so forth. It's like a never ending job hunt in corporate world. Literally everyone's just trying to take everybody out to get to the top, even though Vader's way above them and he can never be reached, he can never be touched. And his job is never ever in jeopardy. The Grand Inquisitor, I know he dies in Star Wars Rebels, so he's not gonna have to worry about dying in this because Rebels takes place a couple years after everything that's going on right here. Because he dies fighting Kanan Jarrus He's going into a battle with him. Kanan eventually overpowers him. And rather than go back and face Vader as a failure, he chooses death and just accepts, you know, whatever fate happens to befall him. And that's the last time you see of him on screen. However, in Legends, which is considered not Star Wars canon, Darth Vader goes and finds him. His body, his soul, traps his soul Puts it on an abandoned Jedi outpost, but Luke later shows up to try and learn more about the Jedi. He fights the Grand Inquisitor, and then Vader, feeling the Force disturbance between those two fighting, notice, finds out Luke wins. The Inquisitor, after Vader shows up, literally begs Vader, please kill me. Please let this end. There are fates worse than death, and I am currently living it. Let me out. And Vader is like, no, I'm not even going to bother honoring your request. You are still useful to me. So continue to suffer. Dark stuff. Sometimes Star Wars gets a little bit darker than all that. 
nice light appeal that is shown throughout the series. I would love for Star Wars to go a little bit darker, a little bit grittier, show a story kind of like this. But we'll see what we get. I'm so super, super excited with Kenobi. But the main reason any of this information that has been explained to you guys so far is important is this. We know that the Grand Inquisitor will not die in this series. The fifth brother will not die in this series. We don't know a whole heck of a lot about the third sister, Reva. She could die in the series. She could be captured. She could go somewhere else. There's a lot of information about her that's super, super vague. She was probably one of the least fleshed out characters pertaining to the Inquisitors and everything that they have going on. So we'll be learning a lot about her. The Inquisitors, I believe, will largely play a role of Vader's bounty hunters, Vader's enforcers. He'll basically be like their uh, sergeant or chain of command, whoever's in charge of them, relaying orders to the Grand Inquisitor, who then relays orders to them, makes everything, you know, work in a certain time, certain place, certain order. The Grand Inquisitor will probably play the main role of a couple appearances here and there, nothing uber, uber major, but he'll still try and put Reva in her place, try and put the fifth brother in places for both of them to succeed, that they can get done the ultimate mission objective that needs to be done. Reva is going to be super exciting to learn about as a third sister. Very excited for her, all the different planets that they showed. Um, the Inquisitors are basically the Knights of Ren if they actually had a cool backstory. The Knights of Ren backstory is still being fleshed out in the comics and still being established, but the Inquisitors function the same way the Knights of Ren would have. Any Jedi or any threat to the Empire they believe was large enough, send these guys in, they go handle the mission objective, and they get out of there. The Inquisitors are going to play an interesting role in Kenobi moving forward. I'm very excited to see all, a lot of the stuff that we got played out. Please let me know what I got wrong in the comments below. Be sure to hit that like button. Be sure to hit that subscribe button. It's greatly appreciated. Love and support each and every one of you. I hope you guys learned something new today as far as something pertaining to the world of the galaxy far, far away of Star Wars. I have been your Jedi Master Brent. Thank you for being my apprentices today. Be sure to check out all the other amazing content that we have coming up. Thank you.